Welcome to NTD China News. I'm Kathleen Zhang, and here are today's top headlines. The Chinese ambassador meets with the UN envoy in Syria. China's communist leadership promotes a multi-party system, but that may not mean what you would think it means. And NTD talks to former inmates from the Messenger labor camp about a box of Halloween decorations in Oregon. The Chinese ambassador to Syria, Zhang Xun, met with international envoy to Syria, Lakhdar Brahimi, on Wednesday. Brahimi is currently on a week-long visit to Syria. He is meeting with officials and opposition figures there to discuss the Syrian crisis. After meeting with Brahimi, Ambassador Zhang Xun told reporters the two had agreed that the situation in Syria was serious. Brahimi has said his talks with Assad's regime dealt with possible solutions to the crisis. Activists claim the violence has killed more than 44,000 people so far. Brahimi Brahimi's new plan for an end to the crisis focuses on a transitional government, but has left President Bashir al-Assad's role vague. Japan's new ambassador to China arrived in Beijing on Tuesday. Chinese state-run media reported Masato Kitera's arrival by saying that he called himself a, quote, Christmas present. Kitera takes over from Iwichira Niwa at a rough time. Disputes in the East China Sea have rocked the boat with anti-Japanese riots and protests breaking out in China, perhaps supported by the authorities themselves. Both countries are now in a power transition, and Ambassador Kitera has said it is his mission to improve the Japan-China relationship. And domestically speaking, despite one-party rule, the head of China's Communist Party, Xi Jinping, has now gone on record about multi-party cooperation. He's even met with the heads of other Chinese political parties. Wait, it's not what it seems. We talked to NTD's own analysts for more info. China is ruled by the authoritarian Communist Party. But that doesn't mean there are no other political parties in the country, at least in name. State-run Xinhua News Agency reported on Wednesday that new Chinese leader Xi Jinping has met with the new chiefs of China's eight non-communist political parties. Among them are groups like the China Democratic League and the Chinese Peasants and Workers Democratic Party. But all of these state-sanctioned groups are still controlled by the United Front Work Department. It's one of the organizations under the Communist Party's Central Committee, this effectively means these other parties have no independence. This multi-party cooperation is false. It's really just a dictatorship. The leaders in these so-called political parties are either secret Communist Party members or sent there by the party. They're funded by the CCP and must follow its lead. Xinhua claims the eight parties had more than 800,000 members at the end of 2011. She reportedly listened to their suggestions on, quote, major issues like improving working styles and moving China's economic transformation. Above all, Xi Jinping says the Communist Party will improve multi-party cooperation and the Communist Party's political consultation system. The Communist Party has always talked about this throughout its history, but it means different things at different times. During the 1989 June 4th democracy crackdown, the eight wallflower parties all came out and supported the CCP. They supposedly represent the public, but they're more like a puppet controlled by the Communist Party. Xi Jinping was accompanied by Lin Jihua during of his meetings with the eight political parties. Lin is a former secretary to Hu Jintao and was appointed the new head of the United Front Work Department in September. Many had seen it as a demotion at the time. However, analysts have told NTD that those suspicions underestimated the role of the United Front. A woman in Oregon was shocked when she discovered a letter from a Chinese labor camp in October. That's because it was smuggled out in a box of Halloween decorations she bought from Kmart. It was a cry for help as the writer described the conditions inmates at the Ma Sanjia labor camp are forced to work under. Claims of forced labor in China are not new, and this latest revelation has prompted others to speak out. It's a modern-day version of a message in a bottle from a Chinese labor camp to the home of a U.S. resident. On Sunday, the Oregon-based Oregonian newspaper reported a letter resident Julie Keyes discovered inside a box of Halloween decorations. She bought it from Kmart in October. The box came from China, and according to the letter, it wasn't from a factory. Instead, the decorations were made here at the Ma Sanjia labor camp in Shenyang Liaoning province. 
The letter claims detainees work 15 hours per day and are paid less than two U.S. dollars a month for forced labor. It says thousands are held there and that many are persecuted Falun Gong practitioners. Former detainees at Masanjia have corroborated the claims in the letter. I was sent to Masanjia in 1999 and persecuted there. They produce handmade crafts for exports. Most are plastic and are toxic. I was making Christmas decorations and also knitted sweaters. I had to work from five in the morning to eleven at night. Aside from toilet breaks, we had to sit for the whole day and make those products. There wasn't a day off, and we weren't fed properly. In our case, there was no pay for our work. China's labor re-education system is notorious for rights abuses. The system is used heavily in the communist regime's persecution of the Falun Gong spiritual practice. In 2008, the U.S. State Department estimated up to half of the 200,000 registered detainees in Chinese labor camps were Falun Gong adherents. Whoever wrote the letter discovered in Oregon did not sign it, but they did ask for it to be sent to human rights organizations. It is illegal in the U.S. to import products made by convict labor and forced labor. The Oregonian reports that the U.S. Immigration and Customs Enforcement and Homeland Security investigations are now looking into the claims. Sears Holdings Corporation, which runs Kmart, has also said it is holding its own investigations. And we're going to take a short break, but coming up, the U.S. Trade Representative goes harsh on China in his 2012 year-end report. China unveils the world's longest high-speed rail line. And critics of Hong Kong's chief executive plan to take to the streets New Year's Day. And welcome back. The U.S. has launched more trade complaints against China to the World Trade Organization than any other member country. That's according to a new report from the Office of the U.S. Trade Representative Ron Kirk. The 2012 report to Congress on China's compliance with WTO trade rules was scathing. It says 11 years after China joined the WTO, it continues to flout the organization's regulations. That's despite promising to be fully compliant by 2006. The most frequent complaints about Chinese trade practices involve anti-dumping and state subsidies. The U.S. U.S. recently launched a case against Chinese subsidies for its auto industry and unfair import duties on U.S. vehicles. Failure to properly protect intellectual property is also a point of trade tensions. The report claims Chinese authorities pry trade secrets from overseas companies, which violates WTO. Kirk's office blames the quote heavy state role in the economy for these problems. The U.S. said it is willing to engage in more bilateral dialogue, but will resort to the WTO's dispute settlement mechanisms if talks fail. China is one of the biggest countries in the world, and now you can cross it in the same amount of time as your average workday. A new addition to China's high-speed rail network will connect Beijing to Guangzhou and cut the time in between from over 20 hours to just eight hours. But like all things travel-related, this upgrade is not without its snags. China has unveiled the world's longest high-speed railway line. The line runs from Beijing to Guangzhou and spans over 1,400 miles. Train service began on Wednesday and marks the latest in the Chinese regime's push to develop its high-speed rail network. With a travel speed of 186 miles per hour, the connection between the two cities is now cut down to about eight hours. In comparison, an older train on a parallel line takes 24 hours to make the trip. State-run media reported a low-cost ticket on the new train will cost travelers 139 U.S. dollars. But more expensive tickets range up to more than $400. China's high-speed rail has hit several bumps in recent years. A deadly collision in July 2011 sparked concerns over the safety and management of the system. The network is also costly to build. The New York Times reported the railway ministry has run up a debt of 640 billion U.S. dollars to finance the construction of high-speed rail trains. And the network is not being utilized enough to turn a profit. The high-speed rail expansion has also been embroiled in corruption. Former railway minister Liu Zhijun was arrested in February 2011 for receiving bribes on the order of 250 million dollars. Still, Chinese authorities plan to continue building the high-speed rail network. 
planned routes would run as far as Russia and Southeast Asia. Pressure is mounting for Hong Kong Chief Executive Long Chong Ying to resign. Long's Democratic opponents say they're prepared to surround Hong Kong's government house on New Year's Day and say they'll camp there overnight, demanding that Long step down. Hong Kong Chief Executive Lien Chun Ying hasn't been popular with the Hong Kong people since taking office last July. Under his leadership, Hong Kong's economy has grown only 1.2 percent, the lowest since the global financial crisis got underway. Hong Kong is also one of the most polluted financial centers in the world. But topping the list is a controversy over illegal renovations made to his two residences in the special administrative region. The so-called Democratic Beam to Reverse Leung is made up of more than 50 civil groups, including the Power of the People, the League of Social Democrats, and the Neo-Democrats. They held a forum on Mong Kok Street, announcing that police have given them the go-ahead for a massive rally at Government House on New Year's Day calling for Leung's resignation. This government has absolutely no integrity. He obtained the seat by lies. He repeatedly tells lies to cover up his mistakes. This is an absolute disgrace to the Hong Kong people. We must urge Lun Chun-ying to step down. Hong Kong police say the rally needs to wrap up by 9 p.m., but protesters say they will call on people to stay overnight until Leung steps down. The opposition isn't ruling out trouble from the Chinese Communist Party, but they say they're ready for anything. Currently, politics is becoming more and more complicated. They put lots of money on the Stability Maintenance Fund. They're recruiting people who are forces of evil, criminal syndicates, to infiltrate politics. We don't rule out the possibility, but the democratic beam to reverse them will adhere to peaceful, rational and nonviolent protests to fight this. NTD News, Hong Kong. Cold weather and snowstorms continue in northern China. Xinjiang was just hit with the strongest snowstorm of the season, while freezing temperatures in Inner Mongolia are shrouding Yakishi in a thick layer of fog. The strongest snowstorm of the season hit Gongliu County in northwest China's Xinjiang Uyghur Autonomous Region on Wednesday. Some areas saw up to 8 inches of snowfall. This is the first time in the 45 years of my life that I've seen snow like this. This snowstorm is really heavy and dangerous. The storm, accompanied by winds of over 38 miles per hour, greatly reduced visibility for drivers. It's really difficult to drive through heavy snow and fog, and this snowstorm has been the strongest this year. Meanwhile, in Yakishi City in North China's Inner Mongolia Autonomous Region, the temperature dropped to minus 45 degrees Fahrenheit on Wednesday morning. It created a heavy blanket of fog, reducing visibility to around 150 feet. For those who were brave enough to venture outside, their eyebrows were soon covered in frost. People should stay at home as much as they can. It's so cold that it's better not to go outside unless you have stuff to deal with. State-run media reports the cold snap will stay around for another three days in the region. And that's all for today's NTD China News, but remember you can always catch more news from us on the web at ntdtv.org. You can also now find us on the new NTD on China YouTube channel. Coming up next is part of the documentary, Nine Commentaries on the Chinese Communist Party. We'll see you soon.